Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. Welcome back to Class of Friday, where we look at a G.I. Joe classified series every Friday. This week we are backtracking a bit. I'm going back and looking at one of the Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins movie figures. This is Akiko. I picked up this figure recently and I wanted to look at it. I now have all of the movie figures except for Scarlet, and I will get that one eventually. Let's look at the packaging for this figure. The box has the window pane showing the figure and the accessories. It has the Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins logo and the G.I. Joe Classified Series logo. This is Akiko. It has some gorgeous painted character artwork on the front of the box that continues to the side of the box with this dragon. I think that looks really good. This is number 18 in the Classified Series and it has the Arashikage hexagram on the box. The back of the box has the generic movie artwork that we got with the other movie figures. On the other side of the box we have these symbols which represent her specialties. This means she's a sheriff. This means she's a fan of Mace Windu from Star Wars. This means her hair hangs down in front of her eye. And this, um... This means she's a fan of Alanis Morissette's Jagged Little Pill. Now that we've looked at the box, let's take Akiko out of the box and take a look at the figure. Here is Akiko outside of the box, and at a glance, this looks like a nice figure. It's a formidable-looking ninja. I like the black and off-white colors. It bears the likeness of the actress that played the character in the movie, Haruka Abe. This is not based on any vintage G.I. Joe action figure. This is not Jinx, the G.I. Joe Red Ninja from 1987. It bears no resemblance to that figure. However, Akiko in the movie was kind of like Jinx, and I believe if there had been sequels to that movie, this character would have become Jinx. Let's take a look at her accessories, and there's a problem for me right off the bat. She can't hold all of her accessories at the same time. Unless there's some way to sheath the swords or the staff that I don't see, she has to leave one of them behind. She includes these short swords, with long handles and short blades, they have silver paint applications on the blades. Minimal detail, but they look okay. These are decent weapons. I don't really have a problem with the accessories themselves. There's just no sheath for these swords, and that's the problem. She also includes this staff, which she can hold one or two-handed. It has minimal detail. It has the silver blades, just like the swords. In fact, it looks like the swords just connected at the middle to form a staff. That's what this is. It looks like the staff is the two swords connected together, and if that's what they're going for, then they should have had a way to connect the two swords to form the staff, because now we have the problem of she can't hold everything. That's really it for accessories, really minimal accessories, and yet the accessories are a problem. She has few accessories, yet too many. Let's take a look at Akiko's articulation, and this figure has decent articulation, but other classified figures have slightly better articulation. She has a good range of motion on the head all the way around, up and down, and no obstructions, no complaints about the articulation at the head at all. She has butterfly joints at the shoulders. They don't move very much, but she can move her arm up at the shoulder. Good range of motion on that, and swivel at the shoulder all the way around, hindered a little bit by this collar piece. She has a swivel at the elbow. She also has a single jointed hinged elbow. She has swivels at the wrist, and both wrists have up and down hinges. She has a bit of an ab crunch, but it is very limited moving forward. It does not want to move forward. It can move back a little bit, and she can twist at the torso. She has a good leg split. Pop the legs back in their sockets when you move them back. Her forward leg movement at the hip is somewhat limited by this tunic piece. She has a twist at the thigh cut. She has double jointed knees. She has a twist at the boot cut and she has hinged ankles. Let's take a look at how this figure looks, starting with the head, and the head has a really good actor likeness. Really good face, really good hair. This whole head is really well done. I think that's excellent. She has a mostly black uniform with this collar piece that has off-white strips that go over the shoulders. The off-white paint continues on her outer arms and around her elbows, and she has silver zipper detail 
details on her sleeves and black gloves. I got no problem with this. All of this looks pretty good. She has a black belt knot piece that's an extra piece that attaches at the waist, and I like that. That adds some depth to the figure. She also has this tunic piece with silver zipper details and off-white panels on the back. That's all we get for paint applications. The legs are all black. The legs do have a texture pattern for the cloth. That looks really good. She has these poofy extensions on the outside of the upper legs, and those look okay, but on the right leg, it creates a really deep hole for the pin at the knee. The black textured trousers continue down to her boots. The boots are also black, but instead of a matte black finish, they are a glossy black, and they are high-heeled boots, which is surprising. It must be difficult to run and fight in these. The Jinx figure at least had more sensible shoes. That is a Kiko. It's difficult to assess this figure. I have not been overly harsh on these movie figures. I think they're mostly pretty good. This figure has some good points, but it also has some issues. The head is good. The colors are minimal, but they get the point across. The articulation is okay, but could be better. Some of the later G.I. Joe classified female figures had the double jointed elbows. The accessories are a problem for me. She simultaneously has too many and too few accessories. Either the swords should combine to create the staff, or she needs to have a way to holster the swords or the staff. This figure is not Jinx, but I kind of wish it was. I would have liked to see this character developed more and eventually maybe don a red uniform like our Jinx. As it is though, standing alone, this is kind of a middle of the road figure. It has some good points and some bad points that kind of cancel each other out. Generally, I like the movie figures more than I like the movie. I'm eager to see Scarlet and the Baroness and see how they stack up next to Akiko. That was my review of Akiko for Class of Fridays. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel for more classified and vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews. You can find me on social media on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. I can only continue doing these videos with the support of my friends on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, that's a great way to do it. You can get your name in videos like the names you see scrolling on the screen right now. I'll be back soon with another G.I. Joe classified figure review. Until then, remember, only ninjas are ninjas.